Hello, I'm doing this video because one of the biggest questions I get is about conditional formatting and dates. So we're going to look at them together and how you can use conditional formatting to show when the date may have expired or a date might be coming up to expiry. So on this example we've got a couple of people and they've done a course and that course has an expiry date. So let me just show you one that I've done. So here we go. So if it's expired already, they're going to go red. If there's only seven days to go, it's going to be orange. And if there's over 14 days to go, it's going to be green. So let's have a look at how we do this. I think before we do this, it's useful to know how dates work. So here's my example I've prepared. And, and let's talk about the date. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop today's date in. And I'm just going to show you how Excel understands the date. So we're just going to go up to the formatting. I'm going to change it to general. And I'm going to get a number. Now you might be thinking, well, where on earth does that number come from? Well, it actually comes from Excel's numbering system. So they started with the 1st of Jan, 1900. And you might, then obviously weren't using Excel then, um, but that's when they went back to. That's given number one. The 2nd of Jan, 1900 is given number two. Now bear with me this because this is relevant to the number that comes up because when we keep counting the days and between the 1st of January 1900 and the current date 45,770 days have passed. So when you enter a date into Excel it is literally a number. It only makes it a date to make it look pretty for us and for us to be able to understand it. That's the first thing. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So um, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to get rid of this here, these figures here. And you can put the dates uh, actually in the conditional logic formula, in the conditional formatting formula. However, it gets quite complicated. So what I've decided to do is do myself a little key. And I'm going to start off by putting today's date in. So I'm going to start in G4. Um, I could just type in today's date, but that's not going to be dynamic. So let's use the formula equals today, open brackets, close brackets, press enter. And what that formula will do is it will just bring up the current date. So when I open this spreadsheet tomorrow, it will say the 24th of the 4th, 2025. So that's my starting point, and that date is going to move. Now then I want to work out um, I want a warning with seven days to go. Now remember I said to you that in the background a date is just numbers at 45,770. So all we need to do is add seven onto the current date. So let's start in G3, we put in equals, select the cell with today's date in, plus seven, enter. So that will give me a week's time. Yes. But I now also want to be know that ones that have got 14 days before or over before they're due up for renewal. So let's put in a, foot, a date 14 days from today. So we'll start again equals. We're going to select today's date plus and we're going to put in 14. So 14 days. So all you're doing is taking that number and adding on seven days. Now let's, see, let's just so you can see this, I'm just going to change all three of these date formats to general and you'll see literally it's a series of numbers. So you're starting off with 45,770, add on seven, add on 14. Okay, let's take them back to dates. They look much more sensible there. Okay, the advantage of this as well with this um, one in B4, G4 being a formula is that it will change. So what will happen, G4 will change according to today's date, which will mean G3 will change and G2 will change. Even if you're not doing dynamic dates, if you're using conditional formatting and you want to base them on dates, I find it much easier to have this little key here. Okay, so now we've got the key set up to what we want to do. We can have a go at putting these formulas in. So let's start off by highlighting the cells we want the conditions to apply to. And we're going to go up to conditional formatting. And I'm come, going to come down the bottom and I'm going to go to um, new rule and use a formula. Okay. 
So, so when you're doing more complex conditional formatting, it's probably better to come into this box rather than using the preset ones that I've talked about in other videos. I will link those other videos to this so you can go back and you can see how they work too. Okay, so the first thing we're going to say is we want C2, let's start with Fred, to be less than or equal to G4. So C2 has got to be before G4, which was today's date. Now when that happens, I want that to be red. So let's just go and set a format. Let's go to format and we're going to go to fill and choose red. I'm also going to go to font and I'm going to choose white. Choose OK. Now I'm going to do one more thing because with conditional formatting, when you when you sometimes what you find is it doesn't apply it to every single one. So I need to remove the second dollar from C2 because I want it to go from C2 to C8. So it's a bit fiddly and what you shouldn't be careful of doing, don't use your arrow keys in this bar because if you use your arrow keys it starts putting other things in. So I've got to be careful where I click, I'm going to delete the second dollar. So my formula is dollar C2, let me just zoom in, dollar C2 less than or equals to dollar G dollar 4. Yes, I want the dollars to stay in G4 because that's always going to be the same but C2 I want it to move down the column which is why I've removed the second dollar. Okay let's choose OK and let's test that's worked. Okay so that has worked so you can see these ones have come up. I'm just going to do a double check. I'm going to change this one for the 1st of June. Let's change it to the 1st of March. Yep, that's good. I'll change it back to the 1st of June. Okay, so it's good to test these things as you go along. Build up slowly. Okay, so that's the first one. So let's do another one. And if you're doing this, work logically through it. So I've started with the lowest one. I'm now going to go on to the next one and I'm going to go up in time scales. So now we're going to go back to conditional formatting, back to new rule, use the formula and we're back in this box again. So this time we're going to concentrate on C2 again and we're going to say C2 is less than or equals to G3. So that was my seven days to go. I'm also going to take out that second dollar. Remember we did that in the first example and now I'm going to set the format. So let's go format, fill, choose my color, choose OK, choose OK. OK, now what has happened here is it's kind of doing them in the wrong order. So let's come back into conditional formatting and manage rules. Because what's happening is doing the um, the orange one th first. And I need to do the red one first. I need it, that needs to be my first action. So I can move this up. So in here, I've got a move up button that's there. And I just click on move up. And that will just do the do the less than today first and then action the less than seven days after that. So sometimes getting the order right is one of the reasons why it doesn't work. So if you're trying to do this on your own example, have a look at the order your conditions are coming in. Right, let's choose apply. There we go. So that's working now. Yes. OK, so let's go and have a go at the green one. So we're going to go back into conditional formatting. Back into new rule. Use a formula. Let's try again. So now we're going to do the same thing. C2 is less than or equal to G2. And take out that second dollar. So, so we're kind of following a bit of a pattern here. Let's go and set the format. So we're going to make it green. And we're going to make it white font. Choose OK. There we go. That looks good. OK, so again, that, that's happened. It's this, this final one, we, one we've just done, has overtaken and taken priority over everything. We don't want that. So let's go into conditional formatting, manage rules, and we're going to put that one we've just done at the bottom. Yes. When you set them up, you could set these up in the other way, but I actually think it's important to show you what happens when the rules are in the wrong order and how by moving them up and down makes a difference. So that's one of the reasons I'm setting them up in this way. So let's choose OK. 
and there we go so you see we've got a green one here because that is only got 14 days to go but now I've got one more and actually that's in June and I really need to take that into consideration because I've said less than 14 days but I also need to take into consideration anything over 14 days so we're going to set one more condition so conditional formatting manage rules actually I could I could have done new rule but it doesn't matter we can go in this way let's do new rule use a formula and then we're going to start with this box and we're going to again do C2 greater than I won't do equals because I did that in the other um, 14 days to go one greater than G2 set my color so I'm going to make this one green as well same as I did before that's it okay and remember to remove that second dollar choose OK and let's move the rule down to the bottom so that will be the last one to process let's apply it and there we go um, let's just close that so you can have a look so there we go so basically if there's 14 days or over to go they'll be green seven days to go will be orange and then if it's expired it will be red and by setting this key it allows you to think about your parameters and you can put that into the conditional formatting formula so you can but then it becomes quite complex so let me just sorry let me just go back into where, where we set them up so here we go manage rules here we are so it becomes really complex so by setting up your little key it allows you to prepare what you're going to do and then all you're doing is basically saying one cell is greater than the other think back to dates dates are numbers and you're just saying one number is greater than the other if you were going the other way actually before we do that let's just talk about what's gone on in this box because there's a lot if you've ever looked at the conditional formatting box in detail there's quite a lot of information here so you've got the formula initially you've then got the color and then at the end you have where, what cells that formula applies to so I think that's quite important just if it's not working go back and have a look because sometimes it might be it's not applying to the right cells and that's the problem um, the other thing I would say in this box is if you've got formulas it's always worth checking if you've got formulas that aren't working conditional formats that aren't right delete them clean them up because they will just clog up your spreadsheet and make it really difficult and, and it can make it it can slow it down if you have too much conditional format in your spreadsheet it can really slow these things down okay so we're all good we're all working what I suggest is save this or like this video and then come you can always come back to it because this is one of those things that I have it's easy to forget so make sure you like it make sure you subscribe because then you can follow up you can come back when you need to do a spreadsheet like this that's got dates in and I really hope this has helped thanks for listening